All right, guys, welcome in. It is time to look ahead once again, week 11 this time in the NFL. I'm Joe Ranieri. He is Petty Covers. It is wagertalk.com. And yes, we love looking ahead because it gives us a uh, pretty good idea of maybe what it is the future holds in for us. And we've seen a lot of crazy numbers over the week, Teddy, since we began this show. Some continue to make sense. Some a little bit head scratching, but as we continue to move along, there's no doubt for the folks that have been watching and following us here, um, the value isn't that hard to figure out sometimes by knowing what this number is now, seeing the results on Sunday and then going, oh, it, it really is starting to come together for a bunch of the viewers here. Sure. And again, we're talking about week 11, 11. games, which right. now have bettable lines. We're going to use the numbers from the Westgate Superbook right here in Las Vegas. Uh, you, there are other books that post lines as well. So it's not like Westgate's the only one. Uh, the limits are reasonable. It's not like they're only taking 20 bucks on it or something. You know, they'll right. take bets uh, on these numbers. But the concept is what are we seeing ahead of time for the games next week? that we can take advantage of now. And if we have handicaps of this week's games, we say, hey, if this happens, boy, this number is not going to be here. You know, that's what we're trying to find. And the whole concept of find one or two of them, make one or two bets. Uh, you know, you find more than that, you make more bets. It's just uh, it's just that simple. So uh, it's a fun exercise. I like to do it every week, Joe, and uh, uh, lead away. Yep. And, 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 and we'll dive into the uh, Thursday night again, week 11 here, guys. But I will say this. The last couple of weeks, we've handed out some of their, not every game, you know, Teddy's got his power rankings going there, but there's been at least one game every week, Teddy, where we looked at. Last week, it was the Giants and the uh, and the Washington team, and we looked at that two weeks ago, and man, your eyes got real big when I gave you that number ahead of time, said it didn't make any sense, and Sure enough, it came to fruition. If you uh, if you ended up taking that uh, that New York Giants team against Washington last week, it, it turned out to be a pretty good night for you. Sure, and, and again, I mean, these are lines that the uh, that the books it gives you a sense of where the power ratings truly are. Yes, for all of these teams, and that's why I always check with mom. Like, here's my power rating number. Here's the the look ahead power rating number. And when we find a differential, and sometimes a significant differential, like we did yep. for the Giants. And Washington, now you know that's a time to pounce, no question. And you know we we saw the, uh, uh, but people always say, "Oh, I'm so surprised where the line came out." Oh, I can. And if you watch this video, you'll never be surprised with the line. Exactly, <laughs> which is knowledge know. is power. The guys. range that it's likely to be in. Exactly, we say this all the time: knowledge is power, guys. And you'll get a better understanding of market movement, line movement, the range. A lot of this will start coming together for you. So it's a great place to start week eleven. Thursday night, let's dive in, Teddy. The Arizona Cardinals traveling to Seattle. Divisional matchup taking on the Seahawks, who will be giving them five and a half points. Both teams coming off a loss into this weekend. Interesting to see looking ahead. What do you got it at? I got it shorter than that, man. Ooh. I got a point and a half powering differential between the two teams, wow. which puts us in the two and a half. They're actually... Because it's a, a Thursday night game, you're, you're, you're always going to give a little more for the team that is with the home field edge. Right. Because traveling, you know, the, the short week with travel is an issue. Um, and with a young QB, uh, you know, like Kyler Murray, who we're very impressed with, he hasn't done it 10 times before, you know. Right. So it's not like he's done this over and over again. So I, I would probably give it two points there uh, for the Seahawks home field. But that still puts my number at three and a half. Yep. Uh, so to see that differential at this stage of the season, this isn't week two. This is not week four. Right. You know, the lines aren't uh, jumping from one week to the next. I don't expect to be very far off on most of my numbers. Like a two points or, you know, two and a half points to me is that's that's eyebrow raising. Uh, I, I think that five and a half is a little bit high. And if I were going to make a bet right there, yep. it'd be on Arizona plus the points. Be interesting to see how uh, Seattle comes back uh, this week mm -hmm. against the Rams. See what happens at that number moving forward. Uh, the Eagles. We'll be traveling to Cleveland. Now, Cleveland, uh, as of taping now, guys, we hear there are some uh, some COVID uh, situations going on there. Baker, we don't know if he'll play, if he's not, or what's going on there. But they'll be home laying two against an Eagles team who's taken on those New York Giants this weekend. Yeah, and, and look, let's 
let's be real about this. There's COVID situations going on everywhere right now. Absolutely. And all we can do is give the best information we can at the time that we're giving it out, uh, yep. which is what we're doing right now. So any of these, uh, you know, the, everything comes with a caveat in 2020. Uh, you know, it's an asterisk. This is the best info we have at this moment as we record. And that's all I can say. Uh, you know, and we have when we have Stafford as a question mark with COVID, and we have Roethlisberger as a question mark with you know with, with COVID, and uh, obviously for this game, I forgot what game we're even there. I, I haven't looked at the games yet. Well, so, no, uh, Eagles. Yeah, no, Eagles. Browns. I. It's uh, Cleveland enjoyed an awful lot of hype in the first half of this season over here. Is the market finally caught up in your eyes? Only laying two against an Eagles team. The markets have crashed on the Browns already, dude. Look yeah. at the number coming out of the bye week. Yep. You know, Crazy. where they're laying, uh, you know, what's Cleveland laying right now? It was, it, it opened two and a half yep. and got bet up to three against Houston. <laughs> you know, a two-win Houston team that struggled against the Jags last week. Yep. Um, you know, obviously the OBJ news where he's out now for the season uh, with Mayfield unable to practice. You know, when the QB doesn't practice, it's an issue. Um, but Are they really losing a lot with I, Case Keenum, though, I'm wondering? Uh, uh, Stefanski, Keenum, they were pretty good in Minnesota together. They had a brief moment. <laughs> I'm like you a know. chick I dated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> That's what Case Keenum is. He's, he's never been good, but he has Love brief it. moments, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, he, he's, he's like Nick Foles, you know? <laughs> Nick Foles never going to be good, but he has brief moments. You know, there's, there's plenty of QBs like that. Yep. I got a point and a half powering differential between the two teams. Uh, Browns are at home. Uh, so that puts my number a little bit higher there, two and a half, three. Mm. Uh, but. But nothing, uh, uh, nothing and, extraordinary. Yeah, and and I, I want to see what that Philly injury report looks like uh, uh, this week. You know, they were one of the most. You know, with San Fran, Philly as the two most banged up teams in the NFL, um, and 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 San Fran's kind of superseded them now because uh, the Eagles are starting to get a couple guys back. So uh, that that injury report could move in their favor. Yep, interesting game against uh, the Giants here this week. Uh, all of a sudden, the Falcons, they fired Dan Quinn, and they rattle off a whole bunch of wins. They play defense. They, they score points. It's, they're consistent. But now they're taking on a team they know pretty well in the Saints in New Orleans. Saints, seven-and-a-half-point favorite against them, Falcons. So, on the one hand, they're one Todd Gurley falling down at the one-yard line away from being 4-0 under Raheem right. Morris. Yep. All right. I mean, the – on the other hand, again, last week, you know, up by margin, relax, everything's fine. No, it isn't, you know. <laughs> Here's Drew Locke <laughs> leading Denver true. down the field again and again and the big play touchdown, and, and they're, you know, you have a Falcon sticking in your pocket, you're biting your fingernails <laughs> by the, you know, the last two minutes. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, it's a rock and a hard place. You know, there's, mm -hmm. there's two ways to look at Atlanta right now. Um at New Orleans, you said seven and a half. That number's high to me, man. Oh, uh, I was going to say. <laughs> I've got three and a half differential right here. Yep. Uh, so you put the home field and maybe make it five. Um, That's a big number. All that said, off the win that the Saints had against the Bucks, right. you know, off of that kind of win where all of a sudden everybody's healthy. Mm -hmm. And Alvin Kamara's talking about with this offense healthy, we're poetry. Uh, you know, and if they, they got San Fran this week, they're supposed to annihilate that team. If both those things happen, it'll probably come a little bit higher. Uh, and you may see something like the Saints being power rated number two in the NFL behind Kansas City. Coming. Yep. Markets jumping on them. Seven and a half right now, guys. Look ahead. Week 11 against the Falcons team who can score points with the best of them. You even mentioned it, too, a couple of weeks ago. The, the problem, you weren't worried about the Saints' offense. It's been the Saints' defense that's always been the question mark. And what they did against Tom Brady, I, I can they – is that the real Saints' defense? Because I, I don't know. Maybe it's just Tampa they have no problem beating. Coming into the season, that was supposed to be the Saints' defense. Yep. The issue over the first half of the campaign wasn't that they were getting blown off the line of scrimmage on every play or anything like that. They were just blowing an extraordinary number of coverages and giving Ooh. up a lot of big play. Every week they were getting up a 40 yard play and a 50 yard play. Um, if they fix that, which they did against Tampa, they're going to be a pretty good team. Yep. That's, um, you're right about the power rankings. Keep an eye on them. The market might uh, over adjust 
Detroit, Matt Patricia, uh, you're going to find it's hard to believe, Teddy, but he's probably on the hot seat. Taking on the Carolina Panthers, who are, that's the little engine that could, right? It's they, they are just pure money against the spread. They did it again. They almost beat Kansas City on the road. They were getting double digits. Well, now they're home, and they're going to be hosting the Lions, and they're going to give them one point. What say you on this? The, the Panthers are the favorite here, right? They're home, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a pick. So, Is it a I mean, pick? Detroit, Detroit plays Washington this week, mm -hmm. and if they beat them, they'll be, you know, maybe a little bit of a, you know, I, I don't know. With the possibility now that eight teams in each conference could make the playoffs, it's keeping teams like Detroit or Minnesota, a you know, line. teams like that, all of a sudden they're thinking, hey, even though we only have three wins right now, if the schedule breaks right for us, et cetera, et cetera, we can be in the mix, uh, which is worth uh, which is worth something mm. uh, for that. But so uh, I've got the I've got the Panthers two and a half better than the Lions, but I haven't adjusted downward for Christian McCaffrey. I only adjusted upward for Christian oh. McCaffrey. Interesting. Uh, and now that if he doesn't play the because I keep I always say running backs don't matter, running backs don't matter. Every NFL running back's the same, which is all true. But the Panthers are better with Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. They showed it again last week. They really are. Uh, so as a team, I have to I have to adjust at least a point for uh, um, you know him and Dalvin Cook, maybe uh, Saquon Kamara. Barkley. Only, yeah, uh, Kamara. Kamara. Only yeah, there's a handful of backs. Yep. Are, yep. But how much are they worth? They're worth a point at the most. Yes, at the most, yep. a running back is worth a point. Yep. Um, yeah. So. Uh, you know, so like I said, so I have a two and a half point adjustment factor in the home field that makes three and a half for Carolina. But if McCaffrey is hurt and McCaffrey doesn't play, the, I'd, I'd adjust a point downward. That makes that three and a half into a two and a half. And, uh, and if the Lions look good this week and beat Washington, they're going to be home favorites against Washington. Now, I know they've lost their last seven home games, but uh, I believe Washington's the weakest team to come in the yes. forward field during that time. So and, if they win that, there may be a little bit more market support for Detroit. But again, at this moment, my powering number says three and a half. Right, which right says around. That the yep. minus one is cheap. Yep. Interesting, too, uh, what we witnessed Monday night with the New England Patriots. Uh, in week 11, guys, uh, they will be heading to Houston to take on the Texans, the Texans home, just a field goal favorite against this Patriots team who they're going to win ugly. It ain't going to be pretty um ever uh with this team right now so can they win ugly against houston on the road so did you watch the monday night football game well, yeah yeah no okay. you know my jet i with one eye you know i, know. I, 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 know. <laughs> I, might, I okay. won't watch so did you see the play where uh jacoby myers and I, I, I don't think he made it to the end zone but newton found jacoby myers at like yep. a five yard line and Myers got kind of angled, trying to angle around the side and get in, got and he that, got yep. pushed out of like the three. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was on the the, the drive where the Patriots tie, ended up tying the game. Yep. That play to me was a microcosm of New England because I've never seen a slower play in the NFL. Okay, they don't they don't have anybody who can do anything like uh, you know. I I guess can I haven't seen that much of it yet. Yeah. But they're just a slow team. You know, they're gonna have to block people. Yep. A lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I've got only a points differential in my power rating between Houston and New England, which makes this line in the two, two and a half range. Okay. Um, and again, the Patriots are liable to get their ass kicked pretty good by Baltimore this week. You know, yes. whereas Houston is liable to pull the upset in Cleveland. You know, if you're, if you're ranking the two, right. the Texans are more likely to win, I think, than the Patriots and certainly the, the point spread show that. Yep. Uh, which tells us perhaps why, you know, again, I'm two and a half. The market's three. We're not that far off, but the market might be right on this one. Yep. Spot on there. Uh, Pittsburgh, they are going to be traveling to Jacksonville. Take on the uh, the Jags. Interesting here. Uh, Pittsburgh is a double-digit road favorite. They'll be laying 10 against Jacksonville, uh, how far down, and I got to give the, the rookie credit. I, I thought he played, I thought he played well for Jacksonville last week, uh, and I think there'll definitely be a spot for him somewhere in this league on a roster. 10 points, Pittsburgh usually plays down to the competition. What do you think? 
So the rookie quarterbacks have an edge. Yeah. Right now. I bet on Tua. I bet on uh, Luton last week. Um, and you say, what, what, the, what are you talking about? Rookie quarterbacks never have an edge. There's no film on any of them. Okay. There's nothing from preseason. Yep. Nobody knows like what the, the and, and that is, you know, Luton throw for 300 yards last week. Yep. Right. He's not going to be the great quarterback. You know, he's a, uh, but when you have no film and no way to, no tendencies and nothing to show your, your, uh, your defensive backs about how to approach this quarterback, yep. the it's nothing. advantage offense. Yep. And with no crowd noise, mm-hmm. it's advantage rookie. You know, it's real. Yep. Um, that said, now there's film on the guy. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Dallas, uh, uh, Miami now. Yes, you're right. Go down yeah. the, go down so the I've list. Got, uh, I, I, I've got 12 points differential between the Steelers and the Jaguars. Uh, put it in Jacksonville that, you know, I mean, Jags don't have more than a one-point home edge on a good year, yeah. you know. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, that, that, that maybe makes it 11. But, uh, and of course, Pittsburgh, if interesting scenario with the Steelers and the Bengals this week. Yep. The teams that don't have, you know, Big Ben in the COVID protocol. He hasn't tested positive, but he's been around people who tested positive. So he's not going to be practicing. Right. And that doesn't tend to be a good thing for teams covering bigger point spreads that weekend, which could influence the number for next week down for Pittsburgh a little bit, potentially. Yep. Um, that said, the Jags going up to Green Bay, you know, they could get annihilated there. And it's not like the markets are... Uh, are real excited about Jacksonville these days. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't going to change anytime soon. We watched what happened with Stafford. Same situation. Didn't practice at all. Kind of looked like that um, yep. last weekend when he played uh, Green Bay. So it, it's it's going to be interesting, or Minnesota rather. It's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds. But double digit road favorite from Pittsburgh, Week Eleven. You mentioned the Packers. Well, they'll be heading on the road too, taking on the Indianapolis. Oh who threw up all over themselves uh, against uh, Baltimore there, just could not get that offense going. Kudos to Baltimore there, but they are going to be bringing two and a half points to Indianapolis when they play them. So Green Bay favorite on the road, Indy, two and a half. This is an interesting one. So I only have two and a half points differential between the two, okay. which means in Indy, I would have the Packers shorter. I'd have them a point, a point, uh, you know, a point, a point and a half. Um, if Indy pulls the upset against Tennessee, which again the uh, the market they're saying that's very they're liable to do that. Yep. Um, maybe we see because what the Colts are suffering from, from a market perspective, they're suffering from respect not because of their statistical profile, because their defensive statistics are nuts. Crazy. You know they're they're really good. They're as good as anyone in the league. Yep. But there's a lack of respect for those defensive numbers because they haven't played anyone. It's a strength of schedule issue for Indy. Yep. So if they beat a playoff team like Tennessee. Uh, you know, on a uh, this week on the uh, on a short week on the road, we may see a little bit more market respect for Indy. If you like the Colts on Thursday night, this is one that it kind of makes sense. Maybe you bet them both. Yep, yep, absolutely. Because it ain't going to get. We know what Green Bay playing Jacksonville is going to be. So that uh, could be some opportunity here for the Colts. Bengals. I, you know, I, I, I'm looking at this here. The Bengals are going to be traveling to Washington. At a pick 'em, they're basically a pick 'em here. But I, Cincinnati just seems like the better team here. I don't know. Uh, what say you here? Do you have them neck and neck like this, and as a pick 'em, or even? No, I got Cincy three points better on a neutral. You on a um, neutral? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it's not a neutral. It's in in Washington. So that makes it one and a half two. Right. Uh, uh for Cincinnati. So. Um, it's close. Although, if, if one again, Washington's going to Detroit this week, and if Stafford is sick, or if the and Washington's minus five in turnovers last week, and they're live to win the game in the fourth quarter. Correct. You know, um, that's good all for the Alex Smith, leaders, and that was bad, Alex Smith. But uh, you know, they're not there if Alex Smith oh, doesn't throw it all over. All three Alex Smith interceptions were ugly. Okay, Terrible. all three of them. Just you were just like, dude, you're done. Hey, sit down. You're done. Ugh. No, no, really, you're done. Uh, and he's uh, and in between, he threw for like 300 yards or something. You know, crazy. Uh, yeah. uh, so, but that's the NFL in 2020. The yep. offenses have the edge. The receiver. Washington's got some playmakers, man. Um, there are stranger teams than the Washington football team to make you money over the back half of the season. 
I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington, you know, covers some spreads. Yep. Yep. Interesting there. Pick them uh, in week 11 for the Washington and Bengals game. Tennessee. Oh, this is going to be fun to watch, too. Tennessee, Baltimore. Baltimore will be home. Titans on the road. Well, they'll be getting a touchdown, Teddy. Titans, you know, my feeling on the Titans that uh, just a tad bit overrated. Defense came to play last week. Not sure what's going to happen with them this week, but a touchdown's a touchdown, man. Is uh, Some people might think that uh, that number's a little out of whack. What do you say? Uh, you know, again, my powering differential between the two teams is three points. Okay, on a neutral. Okay, perfect. So you factor in a point, a point and a half for this year's home field in the NFL. Maybe you get to four and a half for Tennessee. Tennessee's going to have extra time to prepare. Yes. They play on Thursday night. Um, Baltimore, but again, if, if Baltimore wipes out New England, isn't that the TV game too? Yeah. That's a Sunday night game. If Baltimore wipes out the, the, the Pats, um, which they could. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, they've, they've done it in Foxborough before, as uh, memory serves. Uh then the then 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 this number makes more sense than if they don't. Right. You know, if New England gives them a game, the market's just there's no respect for Tennessee. Zero. They really Zero. aren't. They're they're not they're looking at the Tennessee and saying that all their wins came against the Jaguars and teams that lost to the Jaguars. Correct. You know? Right. Um yep. so much like Indy, there are strength of schedule issues with Tennessee. And uh the Titans have lost a lot of box scores. Um there's the, the but Number feels a little bit high to me. I'm with you. Yep. I'd, I'd rather take seven in this spot than late. Yep. All right. So moving to uh, how about this? Now you mentioned it, Teddy. Minnesota Vikings all of a sudden are alive. Dalvin, this is a different team with Dalvin Cook. He's pretty much put the whole organization on his back and said, "Just give me the damn. You want to feed me? Feed me. Give me the damn ball." Uh, and it's paying off for him. Like you said, eight teams all of a sudden now. Minnesota. They got a little life under them. We never thought they'd be as bad as they were for the first, you know, seven, eight weeks of the season. But they are going to be home laying nine and a half against this Cowboys team. Is that uh, a little overcompensating there? Or is that just about right? So, I mean, you say no one thought the Vikings would be this bad. The Vikings were literally my last cut in Was my season really? one report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With Minnesota under. And as soon as... I watched him week one, and I'm like, I'm an ass clown for not including that, you know. But I, I, I did the marginal stuff. I didn't want to put it in this year. Right. I didn't, you know. Right. Uh, and this stretch of the schedule, in particular, concerned me about betting Minnesota uh, uh, under because right here, they've got a bunch of winnable games right in a row. They got Jacksonville and Carolina after yep. this. Uh, who do they play here? They're playing the Cowboys. Oh, Dallas. Uh, let's see. I've got uh, six and a half points worth of difference between the teams right now. But Minnesota plays on Monday night. Oh, yes. They're underdogs in Chicago. Mm -hmm. If they win the game, there's going to be significant market respect. They're going to have yep. one three in a row, and that yep. number is going to come higher. Yep. Um, so what's the number here now? Nine and a half. In Dallas? No, in Minnesota. They're home in oh, Minnesota. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm like in Dallas. That's too high. But in Minnesota, uh, okay. and again, I got six and a half between uh, between, eight. and you put a point in. It. Uh, my number's eight. But if uh, that that said, if the Vikings get slapped in Chicago and Kirk Cousins look like you know Kirk Cousins and the cold Kirk Cousins, yeah. Um, yep. That number may come a little bit shorter. Yep. Um, so it's, it's a, it, it, it is a potential make two bet scenario, whichever yep. side you like. Yep. Uh, the Chiefs traveling to uh, your backyard, taking on the Raiders to week 11. And uh, the Chiefs did what they had to do. They beat Carolina at home. It happens. They're going to be bringing seven points with them to, uh, to Vegas, uh, taking on that Raiders team, which is, they're a hard team to follow. Yeah, it's, are you a believer yet in, in Las Vegas? Because I know you, you've you been on the fence with him for a while, but what say you here? So, Joe, we're, if we're going to do this pod every week, you got to get this down, all right? Go ahead. 
the Raiders, the Raiders. You can't, you can't just say, oh, it's the Raiders, you know. I'm just you trying it. to make sure I got Las Vegas down. I just, I'm trying to get that through. I ain't throwing no more money in the damn kitty. I ain't doing it, so. <laughs> the the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, everybody, you walk around town, it's all, you know, just saying it like that, it's a, well, it's like a, a, a rallying cry. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, uh. It's but so do I believe in in Vegas? No, yeah, you know no, okay. what happened last week. You know they coin flip. Oh yep. wow, the Chargers found a way to lose another one. You know now I shouldn't say I don't believe in them at all. They're a fringe playoff team. You know, yeah, yeah. they are. Uh, they also uh, beat the Chiefs once already this year, right in Kansas City. Correct. And my hunch is KC is going to remember that a little bit. Damn straight. <laughs> yep. Damn straight. Uh, so let's see. My powering number between the two teams uh, is I've got an eight and a half point differential. Put the game here in Vegas, and we're talking right about a touchdown. Right about the number. Yep. You're right there. Yeah. Vegas, it seemed like they're built for December football. You know, it, it seems like if they if they got a bunch of cold weather games, it's uh, like they had in Cleveland where. That seems like the team we're just going to run it down your throat and may the best team win. I just don't trust the defense, but sometimes I don't trust. That's the I don't trust. So it. you know, this has been a year where the big offensive teams have made people a lot of money. Yeah. All right, that's yep. been the truth of it. Yep. Recognize the first half of the season, not the second half. Twenty twenty is a little bit different from your average year, and if I'm focusing on one thing for which type of teams I'm going to make money with down the stretch. I want teams to play defense. Yep, you have to. It's why I struggle with Seattle Raiders don't here play every defense. week. Yep. Yeah, and Raiders. Be- Raiders don't play defense. Yep. Uh, this team plays defense uh, in my backyard. The Miami Dolphins. They'll be traveling to Denver, taking on the Broncos. And interesting enough, it's a pick'em. Yeah, I mean, so from a power rating standpoint, I've got a. Five point differential between these two teams. What did you give Tua? Did you did you adjust for Tua at all in the? In the end, I kept it flat for Tua. Right. Okay. And I've adjusted Miami up after they win every week because the defense continues to make plays. Yep. And I adjusted them up a little. I I, again, I'm not. I I haven't gone crazy with them. You know, a a hook. You know, half point, a half point, a half point. But I've been adjusting Miami up steadily from week two. From the 49er game, right? I think that was it, right? The uh, the upset of the 49ers. Well, I bet them. I mean, my clients and I have had them three of the last yep. four weeks. The only game I didn't have, they were laying to the Jets. I didn't I, I didn't want to lay a touchdown plus with Miami in that right. spot. But there were dogs in, in the three games, the 49ers, the Rams, uh, and again last week at Arizona, and the clients yep. and I cashed with all of them. Uh, two of them were big tickets. Um, you know, it's been a nice you – know, I've been a Miami believer. Let's just put it that way. You know, Dolphins get a Christmas card for me this year. Absolutely. Um, and now they play again this week on Monday Night Football. Yeah. Okay. So it's a team that's had no success for the better part of the last two decades. Let's just say they win Monday night against the Chargers. You know, the, it's going to be the, the hype's going to be sky high Woo. with Miami. And this number's going to come higher than pick up. Damn okay. straight. Yep. However, from a situational standpoint, it's hard to picture a worse one. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they'll have won, at that point, they will have won five in a row, yep. fat and happy as it gets, mm-hmm. coming on a short week with a rookie quarterback going up and playing in the cold. Yep. And, I mean, the Broncos, is, we talk about the injury-riddled teams, and I know that I was talking about, oh, there's Philly. So, so Philly and San Fran are, are the top two. Yep. The next two might be, what, Denver and Dallas? Absolutely. You know, uh, yep. I mean, the, the, the Broncos are an injury-decimated team. Um, they're supposed to get a couple guys back this week, and maybe the next week, maybe next week they'll get a couple more guys back. But pick them; it, it, it's about the spot as much as the power rating there. Um, Absolutely. If the Dolphins, there's dumber bets to make than Miami pick them right here, even if you don't like the side. Yep. Because you can hedge off it next week at a better price than that. Yep. And then potentially have a middle working for you in theory. Um, and Denver, yeah, that, that's what, I, I've got what a five point differential. Yeah, depending on what happens with uh, with the Cleveland game for Denver, I mean, there's a uh, there's a situation there that uh, you know Denver wins 
week, and where does it go from there? The, the Raider game is the oh, Raider game this week. Yeah, the Raiders. Yeah. That, yes. So and the money's so far the money's coming on uh, on Vegas because De- Denver's injury report is just ugly. It's just a really, really ugly. It's really, getting worse. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's yeah. Getting worse. I mean, you know, the, Raiders, the 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 early week money has come towards Vegas in that game. You know, yeah. it was open four four and a half. Those are all gone now. It's fives across the board for this week's game. Um, if Denver pulls the upset, they're still not going to get a ton of love against Miami. You know, all, all, for the spot players will play Denver. The wise guys will look at Denver in that game. Yeah, okay. Uh, for sure. Be interesting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And like you said, how much more hype can the Miami Dolphins uh, think? Kudos well, let to me Brian jump Ford. in because, again, the Dolphins, the Dolphins lost the box score against the Rams by 300 yards. They lost the box score against Arizona as well. Yep. Okay. So we're not seeing the wise guy support for Miami at all. Good point. We watched that line in Arizona over the week all of a sudden jump before kickoff. Dude, there was a lot of money that came in on Arizona. And they're laying two and a half against the Chargers, brah. You know? <laughs> it's not like there's respect for Miami yet. Exactly. You know? Yep, exactly. And that defense is going to eventually stop scoring touchdowns in games which they've done a pretty good job of to this particular point. But at some point, Miami's going to have to live on offense. They're going to have to show us that they can actually carry a game and not worry about the uh, defense having to score points for them. And that brings us to uh, the Jets. I don't even know what to do with the team. Taking on the Chargers. Um, just, you know, it's just, it's, Joe, I, listen, I hope they don't win a game so at least they can rebuild this franchise, get the number one pick, get rid of Gase and start from scratch, light the match. But the Chargers are at home, 10 and a half points. And this is a team that finds every way to lose a game. 10 and a half points uh, to the traveling New York Jets to LA? So I got a 10 and a half point differential between the two. Wow, okay. Um, so that makes it, you know, and then in this range, you would probably only give a point for the home field. You're not gonna give a point and a half or two. Uh, once you're getting into double digits, the home field edge lessens. Um, uh, and then even 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 in a normal year, if right. I, if I've got a thirteen point differential, I'm not giving a team three. I'll give them two in the home field. Gotcha. You know, it's just okay. it's just it's just kind of how it works. Yep. Um. But so I've got ten and a half point differential. If the Chargers win on Monday night against Miami, Miami. there's going to be some Chargers love. The wise oh, yeah. guys already love that. You know, yep. wise guys love 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 them some LA. Mm-hmm. Um, and their stats are fine and all of that. So. Uh, that number, I would think, could only go up. And what the Jets are on by this week, right? So we don't That's get to uh, we, yep. we don't get to watch them lose in excruciating fashion again. But uh, for, for you, you, and I know you're a Jets fan. If you get the number one overall draft pick, you have to take Trevor Lawrence with it. Quarterback yep. is about seventh on the Jets list of what they need. Yeah. And that's how you know, that's and then they'll, they'll get Trevor Lawrence and they'll put him behind a bad offensive line with no skill position talent around him. Yep. And the same thing will happen to him that happened to Ken O'Brien. Right, go down the list. Absolutely. Yep. Who was highly touted coming out. Neil um, O'Donnell. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Just keep going down the list, guys. It's uh, it's uh, I, ideally it would be great to get the first and see if you can't tempt somebody to give you a haul and go get him. And rebuild and that Jets way. And fans would proceed to go nuts yeah, yeah, if they absolutely. did that. Because Trevor Lawrence it may well be a once-in-a-generation talent. Yep. I would point to Miami and say, look what this team did, guys, in a couple of years. I mean, this was, they were literally, nobody was going to the games here. They had diehard Dolphin fans stuck a fork in them. They bring in the right coach. They sell off, or they start from scratch. They get draft capital. And... They ended up getting their quarterback, and they're on their way to actually being uh, at the top of the AFC East for the next five to ten years. It can be done. The formula is there. You can rebuild in the NFL in two or three years. Not so easy to do in baseball, but you can certainly do it in the in the NFL, provided you make the right moves. And it starts. The Dolphins the have the have the Texans' top two picks this year, it, and the Texans are two and six right now. Yeah. So. That's how you do it, guys, Jet fans. Along with their own. Hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, which they already had a boatload anyway. How about uh, Monday night? Uh, the Rams, again, week 11. So this is Monday, November 23rd. 
Rams traveling to Tampa, taking on the Bucks. Uh, we are looking at the Tampa Bay Bucks being a three and a half point favorite, home favorite against the Rams. I see that look. That's an interesting look. That's the okay. look, guys. Right there. Just rewind this right now and look at <laughs> look at that look that we just got from Teddy the minute that number came out. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. So my pirating have these two teams even. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. So you put in, but there's multiple scenarios we got to talk about because yeah. both the games this week are going to affect the number. Yep. So again, if the power numbers even Monday night football game, I'm giving them at least a point and a half. Right. You know, so that's so about one and a half versus a three and a half. So three and a half seems a little bit high, but not, you know, what it could does. change. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let's say the Bucks go to Carolina and lose. Oh, okay. How's it look now? Mm. They Bucks. laying three and a half on Monday night. Nope. All right. Nope. Rams are in a battle against Seattle this week. It's a near pick'em game. Is it like a point, point and a half uh, spread there? Yep. Let's say the Rams beat them up. Where's this number come? Three and a half? There's no hook on there. Nope. You know. So if you think Seattle's going to beat the Rams, and if you think the Bucks are going to beat the Panthers, this number makes sense. Yes. If both both things don't happen. I think you're getting a free half point at a minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. But FBO, again, some of the metrics. You know, FBO had the Tampa's offense is number one in the NFL mm -hmm. prior to uh, uh, the Saints game, which their offense wasn't and isn't number one in the NFL. But Correct. some of the statistical profiles and whatever they use, it's, oh, this is the best offense. Yep. You know, I guess they haven't watched the Chiefs. <laughs> I, I, uh, I think the Rams. The point I is think they're, 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 there are these statistical profiles that point to Tampa that will ensure wise guy support for the Bucks. That's why this number opened three and a half. Yeah, that's why that, located that'll here. happen. Because the Rams, to me, are a lot of smoke and mirrors. They, those offensive numbers are heavily skewed. I think they've already played the entire NFC East at this particular point. They had a 300-yard difference, you mentioned, in Miami. I, I think a lot of those, those metrics with the Rams offense. I like the defense, but I think that, that off, those offensive numbers I don't think they're nearly as good as some people think they are. And it is a free hook, though, if that, uh, if that comes out the way it is. I, I'm just not a big believer in the, uh, in the Rams here. I think a lot of smoke and mirrors with that. Sure. Well, I mean, Jared Goff is not a QB who inspires confidence when he steps up in defensive class. Ooh. When Goff plays a bad defense, he lights him up. When Goff plays a lesser defense, Rams better sweat the whole, the whole way. time. So true, guys. You got a bye week, too. Bills, Bears, Giants, 49ers. Uh, this is week 11. So there you got it. You got some uh, some numbers here to look now, figure out the scenarios based upon what's going to happen here in week 10 this weekend, and then give yourself an idea come Sunday night when the uh, lines, the actual lines move out for week 11. It's worth looking at where we started, what we're looking at here, and where are we going to go, Teddy? That's how you, that's kind of how you fine tune your handicapping skills moving along. Sure. Um, I don't disagree with anything you said, Joe. I mean, you know, it's, uh, the, this is, it's worth the, it. This, it's a grind, you know, this, but yep. the, I think that even for newbies, mm -hmm. it's about having a good process doing the same thing every well single week. And yep. that's far enough. I'm going away Thanksgiving, okay? That's going to be a disjointed week a little bit. Mm -hmm. But my process is not going to change. Good point. Every week, I'm going to do the same thing, generally at the same time, Yep. including this. So I hope you make this part of your process, and I hope it helps. Absolutely. Yep. And I hope you guys will hit the like button and subscribe here on YouTube. Hope you will go visit Teddy over at sportsmemo.com, wagertalk.com, wherever you want to go. Uh, go see his page here. Teddy, you rolled uh, on Sunday, 4-0, uh, I believe, in the NFL last Sunday. Fantastic. The process is working. And you got a big week here now, a couple of college games uh, and possibly NFL games. What advice do you have, folks? Come later in the week, check daily, or just get an all-access pass and never miss a damn play one way or the other. 
yeah. possibly some NFL games. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident we'll have something uh, yeah. in the NFL. It's been a good November so far. I, I'm, I think I'm 79% across all sports since Halloween, and I'm 100% perfect in NFL the first two weekends of November. So uh, it's been a nice start. I'm running pretty good. Uh, I never, I, mean, I encourage it. It's not about buying a play from someone that's hot. If you want to see what I can do, I encourage you to get on board with any kind of package. You want to try a weekend, try a weekend. You know, I understand people have different budgets. You know, what do you get? A weekend for like, it's reasonably <laughs> priced. Exactly. It really it's reasonably is. priced. And one ninety nine, you can still one hundred ninety nine dollars get every one of his college and NFL plays through the end of November, the whole rest of the month. So, plenty of football to be had here, including Tuesday night, Wednesday night, now Thursday night, Friday night. A lot of football guys to be had for a buck ninety nine. No doubt. Yep, get it going, guys. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Come back and see us again uh, next week as we look ahead to week. 12. Best of luck to you guys. Thanks very much. He's Teddy Covers. I'm Joe Ranieri. Head over to wagertalk.com. Best of luck, guys.